And I said, and he goes, I know. I said, you need to come to church. He goes, you know, I just may do that. I said, that'd be a good thing. I think you ought to. I think church would be a good thing for you. And we spent some time. Three more times that, that guy came to the door while I was standing there. I said, man, is that your car? That's some pretty sharp rims you got on that car. He said, no, that's not mine. That's my buddy's. Same time I'm doing that. I'll tell you, the power in the Word of God. Same time, Brother, Brother Jeff. Brother Wheeler is down around the corner. I finished with that. We were headed out of that complex. It was about ready to start monsooning. I walked, and I walked down to the car, and I saw Brother Wheeler. He had three fellas standing around him. Big fellas. And man, he's, he's giving them the gospel. I saw one man walk across the street, go, go over here to the house, and Brother Wheeler continues and continues and continues. And then one of the other soul winners takes the other guy, and so Brother Wheeler is just one-on-one with this guy, and he's talking to him, and they're there for quite a while, and so we pull down, and, and, and man, we're watching traffic go by. Brother Wheeler finally gets in the car, and Brother Wendell, his soul winning partner, gets in the car. And Brother Wheeler said this. He said, man, I gave that guy the gospel. Kid, young man, young man, probably 17, I mean, he was probably about 18, 19 years old, graduated from high school. Him and his buddies. Brother Wheeler said, I was a police officer for a long time. He said, number one, he shook my hand and he had dope in his hand and he forgot that he had it in his hand because he was making exchanges on the street. Then they got phone called while I was standing there and the guy said, no, no, not right now. I'll call you back in a minute. The preacher's here. Brother Wheeler said he looked and here went the car and went driving by. He gave the gospel to that kid and he said, that kid received every word of it with graciousness. All three of those kids, by the way, were dope dealers. And that one young man, one trusted Christ, the one Brother Wheeler was talking to, said, I've got some things that I need to deal with before I do that. Brother Wheeler said he was probably loaded with all kinds of dope on him. And he wasn't about to get saved carrying around narcotics. Now, he got more sense than some Christians. Here's my thought. I said, man, Brother Wheeler, there's some power in the gospel, isn't there? That that young man would reject the Lord Jesus Christ knowing he said full well, I am not saved, I will die and go to hell. Knowing full well, but because of his lifestyle, he rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. Because knowing that there is power in the gospel of Christ, and he had enough sense to know that he'd probably get saved and have to turn his life over and start living for Jesus. By the way, the one young man that got saved, the very next day some soul winners went by that house and knocked on that door and led his mother to the Lord. Now it works. Who's the young? Where is he? Where's the soul winner that led two people to the Lord this week? Is that young man right there? Hey, Christian. Stand up and get a good view. Put your hand up again. Why don't you stand up for us? That young man right there heard about giving out the gospel, and this week, if I'm correct, you walked up to the, I'm not embarrassing, you walked up to the gas station, you gave somebody the gospel, and they got saved. And then you led somebody to the Lord in the, uh, in the neighborhood in which you lived, didn't you? Led two people to the Lord this week. Hey, there's power in the gospel. Thank you, son. You can sit down. Hey, that's just a young man that got a burning desire in his heart to care about others. And you know what he realized? He realized that there's power in the gospel, not power in him. He's just a young man. And he's not going to go up to somebody and say, hey, you're going to die and burn in hell. He was probably nervous as a cat on a hot tin roof giving out the gospel. But blessed be to God, he realized through the preaching and teaching of his, his uh, Sunday school teacher and his youth director and his wife and the preaching that he's heard in recent days, and that's why we do it, he realized that there's power in the word of of God. It's not your words. It's not my words. It's God's words. And that's why I say it's a powerful gospel. Don't you believe it's a powerful gospel today? It's powerful enough to save you. And it comes from the word of God. There's, there's a rest of an outline in the verse, but I burned up all my time telling you stories. Maybe if we'd realize how serious this business is, 29 people found Jesus last week, 1,100 miles from here, 29 people. It's not that difficult, but I'm ashamed 
of how often I don't do it. Because they're there. Just got to find them. Realize that in the Word of God is the power to change lives. It's there. Why? Because he said, not in word only, but in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. Some of you are sitting in this room right now, and you don't have assurance in your heart, but according to that verse right there, it says that there's assurance that comes with the gospel that is powerful that the Apostle Paul preached. And it's because the Word, the Holy Ghost, gives assurance. Did you read it in the text? He said, it came unto you in much assurance. Now, all of us go through times where we wonder, and the devil barks at us and says, look at the way that you live. There's no way that you could be saved. Sometimes I wonder. You're right, devil. It's the only time in my life I ever agree with that stinking low-down good for nothing. When I say, why could I do that? How could I do that and still be saved? But thanks be unto God, my salvation does not depend upon me. My salvation depends upon him. He's the one that saved me. And nothing I can do to give it back. I may turn my back on him, but he'll never turn his back on me. I don't have the power to keep my salvation any more than I have the power to get my salvation. He's the one that keeps it. How are you? I want you to come back tonight. Please, please, I'm begging you, come back tonight for part B because you need what it says about being the right example. I'm going to show you a church that turned the world upside down for the cause of Christ because they followed the example of the man of God. They followed the example of the word of God. They followed the example of God, and they went out and did great things for the cause of Christ. It can be done. Father, we love you this morning. Thank you for the people of God.